Hope you like my side effects there. That is about as good as it gets. If you complain of mild to moderate pain, a doctor will freely prescribe NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You can even go and just buy them right over the counter at pretty much any store. However, they are not as benign as you think, especially if taken long term. I can't tell you how many patients I see and kids of patients that routinely take some sort of NSAID for pain on a daily basis, many times even multiple times per day. It's almost like they think that their body has a deficiency of NSAIDs. Ah, maybe so. Maybe there just isn't enough NSAIDs in the foods or liquids they're eating or drinking. Not. NSAIDs are not a nutrient. If I wasn't clear, I was being facetious. The first step in dealing with a person taking a steady supply of NSAIDs is to evaluate why do they need to take it in the first place. NSAIDs are linked to numerous health complaints. Common brands of NSAIDs include ibuprofen, which include Motrin and Advil, naproxen, which is Aleve, Celebrix, Diclofenac, um, Valtorin. Valtorin. Uh, these are all prescription NSAIDs. Aspirin is also an NSAID, but it doesn't pose the same heart attack and stroke risks. So maybe it's a lesser of two evils, or maybe it's just evil differently in its own special way. Oh, how sweet. So NSAIDs have been linked to many health disorders, such as the following. They've been noted to lead to a 40 to 60% increase in the risk of heart cardiovascular problems, 25% increase in risk of hearing loss, a 60% increase in the risk of heart failure, numerous gastrointestinal problems such as pain, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, bleeding, ulcers, and leaky gut. Oh yeah, I forgot another one. Also, an increased risk of asthma and eczema in children. What? So NSAIDs increase heart attack and stroke risk. The link between NSAID use and heart attack is well founded and the FDA has issued a warning which most people don't know about. The risk may begin within a few weeks of taking NSAIDs, and the longer you take the NSAIDs, the higher your risks. So buyer beware. So now let's get to the, one of the really good parts about what I do in NSAIDs. That's functional medicine and NSAID and leaky gut. In functional medicine, we look at another sabotaging factor of NSAIDs, the infamous, notorious, ever-elusive, and dreaded leaky gut. Leaky gut means the lining of the small intestines has become so damaged that it becomes overly porous, or it's got holes in it, allowing undigested food, bacteria, yeast, and other path pathogens and proteins into the bloodstream from the gut. This triggers inflammation and pain throughout the body, exactly the sort of thing people would use NSAIDs to relieve. So this doesn't even take into account that leaky gut is very tightly associated with autoimmune issues. See my page on audio, autoimmunity, and I have some other blogs as well. But essentially what happens is you get that leaky gut, you're getting all that extra stuff into your system that you shouldn't get, and your immune system goes haywire, and before you know it, you start attacking yourself. So there are some simple functional medicine alternatives to NSAIDs. And this is a very simple, uh, easy list, and it's definitely not all-inclusive. Nobody wants to be in pain. It's understandable to seek relief so you can feel and function better. However, many people are surprised to find that their chronic pain diminishes substantially when they adopt functional medicine basics. Get in and give me 20! So the following are a few ways functional medicine can relieve pain and eliminate that need, need for those NSAIDs. Numero uno, eat an anti-inflammatory diet. This means removing foods that trigger inflammation which for many people is gluten and dairy, grains, legumes, eggs, sugar, and nightshades are other common culprits. Take a look at the link to the page for some common tests that I use. Numero dos. Take plenty of nutrients that combat inflammation and pain. These include vitamin D, which some people have a genetic variance that prevents sufficient vitamin D uptake, and other fat-soluble vitamins A, E, and K. You're also going to want to take nutrients that boost the primary antioxidant, glutathione, and omega-3 fatty acids. Numero tres. Look for natural remedies for inflammation and pain. There are many alternatives such as liposomal turmeric and resveratrol.
Numero quattro. Balance your blood sugar. Many people have blood sugar that is too low, too high, or a combination of both. Balancing blood sugar is critical to reduce inflammation and pain. Keep in mind that there may be a variety of different issues that may be holding you back. And if you need help, give my office a call. But these are some great ways to help reduce your need for those NSAIDs you love so much. Remember, they're not loving you back. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy.